Welcome to Google Summer of Code. Uh, this is the Jenkins Office Hours. It's the 13th of January. Thanks for being here. Uh, let me bring up the agenda uh, topics and we're open to topics that you would like to add. All right, so Jenkins Project, Google Summer of Code. We just released Jenkins 2.263.2 today and Jenkins 2.275 with security fixes. So it's been a busy day so far for me uh, watching and being sure that all the parts and pieces are behaving as expected there. Forgive the my not being as quick on this one as I should be. Here we go. Let's see the meetings. Congratulations on like new release then, I should say. We, we like that. We like that a lot. Oh, no, that's the recordings. I need the notes. Huh, I know that I have notes. Well, I apologize. I am not finding the GSOC notes. We use a Google Doc file, and this is really awkward. I don't find the, oh, in, probably in the event calendar. Just a minute. Let me check there because I could just read that. Yes, meeting minutes, of course. If I would read the calendar, it would also help. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. I find that it helps me if we have a shared copy of the agenda, we look at it together, and then we'll type notes. So January 13, 2021. And let's make the text big enough to read. And now the sharing thing, share my screen. Okay, so you should see January 13, 2021. Is that visible to you? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Yeah, All right, visible. super. All right, so status updates, uh, discussion, so one that that if you are interested, I could put a discussion of the most recently added project idea. Yeah, that would be cool. Like, will be a link, please. Get uh, credentials in a pipeline step. Mm. But bef rather than me spending time talking about that first, are there other questions that either of you have that you would like to put on the agenda? Mm, mm, yeah. Um, I studied the project. Um, um, just a second. Um, I studied the project um, that was um, automatic specification generator for Jenkins REST API. And uh, I, I have researched about quite a lot of things. So I have few questions and like on that project idea, there was one video uh, which is referring to YouTube um, from 2020, discussing about that project idea with the potential students at that time on 2020. So um, at that time, um, Oleg sir said that um, um, we need to, first of all, a good step to get started in on that is to just work with get apis um, with you using salesforce to get annotations and uh, just started making specifications but um, on the other hand um, at that time the another potential mentor which is christine um, also said that you can use um, open api to publish i mean documentation so i was little bit confused i mean um, I have researched a lot, but I'm um, not sure again where to get started um, on that. And I think the answer there, as far as I can tell, is that neither of those is particularly preferred. Both are potential. So uh, as far as Mark understands, mm -hmm. uh, either, path, either path will be helpful. Mm -hmm. and may give you insights on what what will ultimately be the path that you choose that you would choose in your project proposal mm 
because I, I don't think that Kristen had done the full, the full steps there to confirm it. And I'm pretty sure that Oleg hadn't done the full steps on the says pause thing either. Ah, and Oleg's here, so we can we can ask him directly. That's great. So Oleg, Segar was asking about the automatic specification generator for Jenkins REST API. Um, he'd started using, well, Segar, you should explain. I shouldn't restate what you did. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, so hello, um, Oleg. Um, mm -hmm. So I studied that project we, um, in which we have to extract REST API from the sources and then publish the REST API um, documentation. So for that, um, I, on the project today, you have mentioned you have to study Java REST API and open API slash swagger. So um, for that, I have watched the video, which is in the um, project idea, which is directed with the YouTube in which you are talking about um, that project with Christine and the potential students in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes. um, so on, on that, at that time, um, you said um, the first good step to get started to have a good understanding is to um, generate specifications using SESPOS, which is going to capture the annotations. And through that, you can just start it with the GET API. But on the other hand, there is other part of the code also, which do not have um, annotations for which um, I have to, I need a comp I mean, a complete analysis of the project or maybe some um, annotations also to get started. Um, um, so, um, and on the other hand, Christine, I mean, when you said to Christine at that time, um, what's your perspective to get this project um, done? So she said, we can use open API, um, open mm -hmm. API to um, generate the documentation. So I was little bit um, for getting just started in that. So where, from where should I get started? You, you know, um, research further where, I mean, I, I watched all the resor um, resources that I can possibly search. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, thanks for doing this research. So again, uh, you're totally right uh, by referring to these videos. Uh, so yeah, SysPos was just an example because SysPos allows to capture easy bits. So um, items which are annotated and hence uh, which you can easily extract from the code. Unfortunately, our framework, uh, which we use for uh, REST API Stepler, uh, it doesn't always um, provide explicit endpoints, uh, though recently it improved. So if you navigate to the Jenkins code base, you can see that uh, many requests annotated by post, by get, and you can capture data from there. And maybe one of the approaches uh, is actually to annotate uh, uh, methods um, uh, which are missing. Because when you go through class, you can easily determine that uh, the method is used uh, for um, endpoints. For example, it has annotation or it has uh, specific parameters like uh, just query parameter annotation, etc. All these methods uh, immediately become a part of REST API. And in addition to that, you have uh, getters and the getters uh, also documented at Stepler. So by taking these three types, uh, you can uh, cover a significant part of use cases uh, for Jenkins REST API. No, it won't be complete, but at the same time uh, for other use cases, maybe the good approach is to just uh, annotate the endpoints properly if something is missing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, if I have mm -hmm. to um, take a, another one step, so should I get, I mean, study the code base of Stapler or start it with Jenkins core? I mean. So my recommendation would be to actually start from a relatively small plugin. Uh, sorry, can you please repeat that? Mm -hmm. My recommendation would be to start from a plugin. So for example, you can take a Git plugin or maybe something smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, so something which has a REST API. And uh, then you can uh, just, uh, uh, dependence on this plugin, uh, add it to class pass and uh, do some scanning. 
So uh, there are already some tools operating in this way. So you have seen uh, references to pipeline documentation generator, right? Uh, yeah. So I can find the link. So basically you could uh, take a single plugin, uh, not necessarily Jenkins core. Jenkins core is just a big uh, to analyze. And you can uh, take a plugin and uh, try to build uh, an example, which is based uh, on a core base similar to uh, Python documentation generator. Mm -hmm. So should I just pick, let's say one, any plugin and you said a um, Git plugin, and then I try to um, generate the specification for that kind of plugin for that REST APIs, is it? Yeah, uh, it would be one of the most simple ways. Okay, and, uh, and again, mm -hmm. uh, pipeline, uh, sorry, Git plugin might be big. So okay, you can take something smaller as one of mm -hmm. the options. Okay, and um, in that, I mean, you showed um, that um, in that time you're using some Who Am I page, which is showing the info about your um, Git info okay and so is that also a plugin that who am i should i get i mean try to um generate specification for that who am i mm, well uh, you can do that though for my page is really straightforward um just a second uh, i'll open the code No, Mark, uh, are you looking for the code? I was not looking for the code, but I certainly can. Oh, like just a minute, okay. let me. Uh, no, I can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, oh, not Jenkins.io, it's Jenkins. Uh, yeah. core. Yeah, yeah just I didn't want it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, just uh, go to fire for my Java. So, yeah, thank you. So is this is this the right page, Oleg? Yeah. Uh, so okay. if you scroll down, uh, you can see some examples. So you can see that it's exported bin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's extension. So mm -hmm. it allows to quickly map it uh, to the endpoint because unprotected root action. So it's just slash for my. It's exported bin. It means so that if you navigate to that uh, using uh, JSON or XML API, you get the response. And uh, you can see fields which are being exported. For example, get name uh, is authenticated, is anonymous. And uh, this is basically the information uh, which uh, would be exported uh, through REST API. Yes. So, yeah. Oleg, would it be okay if I brought up my Jenkins to show show yeah. how this how the experience mm -hmm. interacting with it for Segar's benefit? So. It's, I, I think, Segar, what you'll see is something like this. So this is my Jenkins instance, and I'm going to append onto the end of it, who am I? And this now has the AP, this is the web page rendered. And if mm -hmm. I do API on the end, Oleg, I think that shows me the REST API yeah. hints. Uh, no, uh, you need to go to JSON, for example. Ah, so if we go to the yeah, JSON there are, API. Uh, three additional types. But yeah, API slash JSON, and you get uh, the API response. So basically, these uh, three fields which we discussed. Ah, yes. Okay. And there it is without the pretty, and there it is when done mm -hmm. pretty. Great. Yeah. Okay. So I have to generate that um, JSON specification, right? Mm, not JSON specification, but yeah, this is uh, JSON response. So you can uh, document it in open API specification. So basically uh, by processing annotations and for example, by extracting uh, Java doc as documentation, though you can see this is not the best example because there is no Java doc. Well, but, and, and this would be, it would be valid for him to add Java doc to this, to this class if that helped. Right. I mean, he could submit a pull request to who am I proposing to to Java doc it. But I think Oleg, the point is valid that if the intent is to use Java doc, this class won't do that as it currently sits. Yeah, anyway, it's just an example. Uh, but 
so um, so uh, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um i mean so basically um i have to the eventually i have to generate the documentation but in order to generate the documentation i need the um end point so through here from annotation i'm just trying to capture the um, end point and try to parse that into and and from that end point i have to generate the um open api specification and from that specification we have to generate the documentation is it mm. uh, yes okay. so once we get get to open api specification documentation can be generated for you because there are tools for that okay okay so so basically i have to um, capture the endpoint and try to um, generate the open api specification from that endpoint yeah and the good step is you said to get started with the um, pick any small plugin and try to capture its um, endpoint get endpoint and just generate a open api specification for it yeah so okay. you don't have uh, to complete all the project uh, during the application phase so it's just uh, discovery so that you uh, take a look at options and uh, you can come up with a better proposal that's it uh, so can you please repeat that sorry so uh, the coding phase happens in the summer before that uh, you basically explore the projects uh, explore the opportunities and uh, your main goal is to understand how to implement a particular project um, and uh, come up with a proposal. So uh, for okay. example, here, if you see that this approach doesn't work, you can uh, make another proposal. Um, you know, that's uh, perfectly fine. And again, uh, yeah, this open API is a quite wide area. So there might be other topics to consider. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal to restate all oh, like the goal, the goal in this phase is to prepare a, a persuasive, mm -hmm. um, thorough project plan, right? Is that a is that a fair way to say it, Oleg? That one of the mm -hmm. one yep. of the objectives yeah. here is even is... not a detailed project plan, but ah. basically uh, to form understanding what would be the deliverables. So, for example, uh, yeah, you can take a look at, uh, at a pipeline step uh, documentation generator. Maybe it could be something like that. Maybe it's something different. Uh, but uh, yeah, the goal uh, for now is basically to see what are the opportunities and come up with such a proposal. Okay. So basically, uh, currently I'm just trying to um, research more and more what are the um, possible ways um, not have to worry about the coding stuff, is it? I mean, you can prototype, kind of. uh, but yeah, the goal uh, is to basically explore the area. So okay, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. You don't uh, have to um, produce, uh, let's say, a solution for the problem uh, to get accepted. Now, um, basically, your goal is to focus on the proposal and uh, to collect information uh, which you need. And if uh, creating some prototypes helps, uh, then uh, you're welcome to do that. No, okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, so um, for now, um, um, for, I mean, for just um, I mean, to just start more exploration. Um, sh can you recommend me any plugin, small plugin? Um, uh, should I can? I mean, well, uh, so how I could do that? Um, I would go to uh, Jenkins and just search for exported bin. Uh, oh, okay. so, so looking in the in the Jenkins mm -hmm. GitHub repository. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, for example, uh, there are plugins which are quite popular now, like configuration as code plugin. So mm. it would be a good starting point. 
because oh, in it there is probably an exported bean annotation that would indicate. Oh no, yeah, oh, right. I make a mistake. No, there is no exported beans. So there is one class configuration is called Java, which exposes API. Ah, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it has no uh, data export API. So yeah, this plugin uh, doesn't work for that. Um, I'm looking mm -hmm. for alternative proposal. Okay, so I mean, is it is it worth a, a look at the Git plugin, or even maybe at the Git client plugin? As I wonder, it well, you indicated that Git plugin might be too large. Whoops, it would help if I navigated correctly. Yeah, so we basically need a relatively small, but at the same time, a useful plugin. So. Yeah, there is. There are many plugins which uh, have exported bean annotations. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually curious. I wonder if the if my my friend, the platform labeler, has an exported bean. I don't think it does. Mm. No, it doesn't. Okay, but it does. Does it have any post? It does have a post. So mm -hmm. so is that might be. One ex oh no, that's just in a in a test, so that doesn't help us. This is only a test implementation of some of mm -hmm. a post. Okay, uh, nope. Yeah, I have a question. Like, what um, the annotation exported bean? I mean, what does what is it? Is it representing that particular exported? Yeah, it means uh, that uh, uh, step that uh, can export uh, this class on get requests. So basically, you can uh, export data from this class when uh, somebody needs metadata. And uh, that's probably not the most popular case because, again, uh, many plugins just uh, receive commands. They do not export the data. OK, so uh, Stepler is using it to export data, right? Yes. So. Oh. Okay. Um, um, sorry, I mean, if I confused, I mean, I mean, no, if I'm a little bit confused, I mean. Uh, yeah, uh, that's so sort of fine because you want uh, yeah, so we still need to find a plugin. So all I guess I look at, at the Git object inside Git client plugin, it's definitely got exported bean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't oh. see any post on it, though. Should I post? Well, uh, Git plugin definitely have some posts. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. The Git plugin I know does. I was just thinking Git client plugin as a smaller, smaller plugin. Okay, so let's look at. Yeah, so for exam example, here is form validation inside inside one of the browsers, like um, yeah, maybe the actual takeaway that uh, if uh, there are not so many plugins uh, exporting data, maybe it's not uh, the best use case. Mm. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Sure that, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you could take one of uh, pipeline plugins, of course. Mm -hmm. um, good options. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, try to find something, uh, but again, I'm just looking at plugins and I cannot find uh, anything is interesting export annotations. Yeah, maybe actually taking a Jenkins core uh, makes sense there. 
um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, okay. Mm-hmm. So, Segar, you had described the, the steps to attempt, and I wanted to capture those, and I wasn't typing nearly fast enough. So, I think what you had said was you, the first is use the who am I based on Oleg's guidance um, class as an example. Uh, in Jenkins core Mm -hmm. and you had noted um, extract the the API endpoints Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. endpoints as or describe them as open API or maybe Mm -hmm. I'm getting it backwards here so extract them and describe the API endpoints with open API then I assume you've got to find some way to um, extract. So that would be an interactively done. Then you extract them, the API endpoints programmatically. And that was where mm-hmm. Oleg was uh, suggesting the pipeline step generator is, a, is an example of something else that does that. Oleg, like, did I understand correctly there, or am I going down the wrong path? Uh, that's uh, fine. That's fine. Mm-hmm. And then, okay. Oh, finally, I found a plugin which is uh, good. Um, oh. and, yeah, it's a quick coverage API plugin. It has uh, multiple exported beams to, to generate a report. Okay, so code coverage API plugin. So, I mean, mm-hmm. okay. Like coverage trend. Mm-hmm. So, from this plugin, I have to kind of extract the endpoint and generating the open API specification, is it right? For a just a um, exploration point of view. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think I think you described it, Segar. This would be this this plugin lets you gives you an example of a place where you can use the exported bean and exported annotations to identify things that are providing data. Now, how Oh, like I don't know how to reach this endpoint from inside Jenkins itself. I'm sure it must be reachable. And is yeah, that from, from Jenkins? Uh, you need to, to publish the first report. Ah, um, and yeah, after that, uh, so we can uh, see. Um, yeah, maybe I should uh, just screen share. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to stop sharing in a second. Let's see. Okay. So I'm doing some asking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, here we have exported the uh, bean. So what Mark was showing, uh, there are multiple entries. You can see that uh, basically all of them uh, point uh, to coverage result. So coverage result uh, here it's basically a model object, uh, and you can see if you go here in coverage result, then. Uh, yeah, we should have exported things for other uh, data fields. So, for example, coverage tree, which is also exported bin. So, what happens um, if you go to um, a recent point, um, you get coverage result, and then on the next level, you get coverage tree. And coverage tree includes other classes. So, basically, we'll get a hierarchical structure. 
um, with uh, a lot of data uh, being generated. So here there will be JSON field uh, results, with, which includes uh, more fields on the NIC. Um, how to access uh, this data? So coverage result, uh, it's model object. Uh, so it's available on the top instance. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's see. I believe it's uh, available through action. So let's uh, check this theory. Uh, so yeah, there is a coverage action. Uh, actions exported, uh, exported uh, through API. And here you can see that uh, there is a coverage result, which is get result. So what will happen here is uh, if you navigate uh, to coverage result page, and uh, then uh, go to result, you will uh, get uh, this report, uh, which is um, a part of API. I'm not sure. Do we have a, a coverage, this coverage API set up anywhere? Um, okay. well, I guess I've... the Jenkins file runner uh, does uh, have it. Just a second. And I thought that I was using coverage API on on mm -hmm. my instance. So I'm, while you're looking, I'm going to look, Oleg. Mm, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, so here's our coverage report. So it's slash coverage, it's coverage action. And uh, we have a report here. So you can see that uh, we cannot access it actually through the web interface, but I believe that... Uh, um, yeah, ci.jenkins.io may have maybe limiting intentionally the... the yeah, right. APIs it's publishing. Yeah, it uh, limits a lot of APIs. But yeah, there is no REST API exposed uh, for this data. So I believe um, it uh, gets just queried uh, uh, through REST. So yeah, probably not the best example either. Let's see, is there a region to meet with? Uh, Actually, you can see that uh, it's already um, get result. So because it goes to target. So um, maybe we could just uh, extract it. Yeah, just, um, yeah, you can see that API JSON works. So if you um, invoke it on your instance, you will get data. Here, basically, uh, the data is filtered, so we get nothing. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, try this URL, a similar one, cover API JSON, and you will be able to get uh, this uh, tree structure of data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and Mark, um, the re recording of this video is again is going to be at Gator, right? So I, I'm, I'm just going to watch it again um, to understand. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's there's a reason why we record these sessions. The, the recording will be available probably within two or three hours of, yeah. of our ending. Absolutely, Sagar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for the explanation. Uh, yeah, I wasn't prepared. Uh, actually, that was that was marvelous, Oleg. Thank you very much for taking us there. So. Now, Oleg, the coverage, the coverage API that you were showing, that's different than the Jacoco coverage that I'm using there. That's a, an entirely different thing, right? That's- Yeah, uh, there are two plugins, which are separate. I see. And so the, the coverage one is the newer of the, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, in, in, I mean, um, I should explore the um, co um, coverage plugin, right? Um, yes. Okay, um, and try to extract the, um, and and I'm um, like um, I mean why are you saying we have I mean I mean I mean not saying but um you said um we need to extract the JSON tree but in order to generate the specification we don't need the I don't I don't think that we don't need the response body we need the API endpoint in order to generate the um, mm -hmm. open API specification um, so basically we just need open API endpoint and from endpoint we just gonna somehow integrate the open API specification in our code to generate that specification from the endpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. correct. So yeah, the main uh, problem is uh, to find uh, this data because as you may have seen, sometimes it's not trivial. 
uh, but yeah, in many cases, you can just add additional annotations. Okay, okay, okay. So in Jenkins, um, yes, uh, step that is basically talking directly to Java. So unfortunately, we are not using Spring or Quarkus or whatever uh, for the mm -hmm. Jenkins core. So it's more difficult uh, to capture uh, mm -hmm. uh, where the endpoints. But again, uh, yeah, I believe that string connotations, in theory, we could adopt them um, as an experiment. So, but but today's implementation really is based on the stapler framework, and there are 15 years of code that is mm -hmm. tied to the stapler framework. So, so having Segar and others who are exploring this idea know that the REST API is is generated automatically in Jenkins by stapler reading the Java or reading the Java objects. Did I state that correctly, Oleg? Yeah. Okay. That's right. And in that video, you said um, stapler, what is doing? It is just kind of a data mining who is just, I mean, doing two things basically, kind of converting the REST API endpoints into Java objects or Java objects into endpoints, kind of, is it? Yeah. Well, it does uh, a lot more, but yeah. Uh, basically, it's binding, uh, okay. binding for requests and for data. Okay. 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 So, hey guys, uh, sorry, I just got to know about this meeting. I like I saw Mark's message on the group and just joined. So, if uh, so, there are only like three minutes left to the meeting. If yeah. uh, I wanted to discuss a few GSOC project ideas. If that's fine with everyone. Yeah, maybe one uh, question. We spend so much time discussing uh, REST API. So maybe Manchu has any, any questions? Because I uh, try to time box and the Actually, yeah, I had questions, but I have a question regarding different ideas, like installation and but uh, if there's like time limit, I'll like, ask it to the next uh, meeting. I'm sorry, Manchu. I'm, I'm having difficulty understanding what you're saying. My apologies. The audio quality is very good. Sorry, sorry. Is it audible? Am I audible? No. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, very soft now, Himanshu. No noise, but very soft. Hello. Ah, okay. uh, yes, I'm that's better. better. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Actually, I did think I did like uh, change some settings in my so that must have affected it. So, is there like time? Uh, still time? Can I ask my question? Like, is it is related with plugin installation manager? Um, there, there, there is time, and I think at least for me, I am willing to continue for at least another fifteen minutes. Oleg, I don't know about you and Kara, but yeah, I've got so time. Continue. We could continue. I'm happy to continue as well. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, that's good. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, doing like I have been following this project, plugin installation manager project idea. Then uh, there's uh, like I was doing what I should say. I was preparing. For, I'm preparing for this project idea. And in this case to study and improve, there is mention of Java. Like I would like to ask, uh, is there any particular framework that uh, you would like to suggest for this idea, like Spring or anything? Uh, for this like particular idea, uh, plugin installation manager tool. Well, like uh, you have mentioned Java, but Java is like so vast. So that's why. So if you're looking uh, for modern frameworks, uh, it would be like uh, yeah, Spring uh, would be option uh, one of the options. You can also consider Quarkus. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, work tool. Quarkus is uh, one of the. Uh, sorry, I didn't cut. Quarkus. Okay. So, this is also okay. a framework you 
could consider. Uh, yeah, so basically... I'll, I'll, I'll... Yeah, please. You were saying something. So, yeah, I just want to say that uh, yeah, this uh, also this is also a quite popular framework uh, these days, um, especially for cloud native applications. It's uh, native support for uh, well, basically support for building native images. So. If you want to explore this option, it uh, could be doable. And, uh, yeah. Okay, fine. Like uh, along with this, any other that you mentioned, and I couldn't like keep up with it. Quarkus and any other framework that you mentioned, and I did not like uh, for CLI yeah. applications. Uh, yeah, there are not so many frameworks. So, yeah. Quarkus. Mm. Yeah, if you, uh, one of the you know, problems with plugin installation manager that it has a pretty bad uh, CLI interface. So, for example, reworking it uh, to let's say pick a CLI so that you have uh, multiple commands uh, with uh, proper option management, uh, it uh, would be a good way to consider. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. then if you want uh, more modularity, you can uh, use uh, Quarkus or something on the top of that. Uh, but yeah, it's a separate improvement, uh, which just uh, makes a little different. So, like, we can go directly with uh, only with Java, uh, like just with Java, or uh, we can uh, have like we can use Quarkus to add more modularity to our code. Yeah, Quarkus is also code. Java. Yeah, uh, yeah and I, I get that. Like, yeah, it's a framework on Java, but yeah. like if I, I want to add some modularity. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes. Sorry. Were you saying something? I, I stopped you in the middle or anything like that. I thought you were saying something. Okay, fine. Uh, so, and uh, like the, you mentioned about JSON uh, data structures, package management tools. So, like you were referring, were you referring to the tools uh, related, uh, which were already built for Jenkins or some other tools uh, in this case, which you like mentioned? Like one, one must know about package management tools. So, what kind of tools were you referring to? Uh, like, do you have any idea or any example? You mean uh, tools for Jenkins? Uh, so in general, there are many CLI clients. Uh, there are tools like plugin manager. Uh, there are also a lot of developer tools. Uh, for example, plugin compatibility tests, uh, the parent forms, uh, different scanners. So if you're looking uh, in the tools area, it's something uh, I would look for. All these tools, uh, yeah. Uh, they are basically standalone. All of them uh, would benefit from some improvements here and there. So, if you are looking uh, for relatively small projects, uh, it could be an option. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, that's like those were the two questions that I had. Thank. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Himanshu and Segar, feels like we've we've addressed your questions, Vibhav. Shall we give you some time and let yeah. you discuss you? You had a few project ideas you said that you wanted to offer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mark. So uh, basically, I had a I had a few ideas uh, regarding uh, like the first idea I had was the cloud events plugin. Uh, basically, Jenkins should support like cloud events. Uh, so this would mean that uh, you should be able to create cloud events, and you know Jenkins should respond to them. Uh, maybe trigger jobs and stuff. So this was the first one. Second one was a project that is already there, a Tecton client plugin, and hoping if uh, it could be part of GSOC, and 
third one uh, i don't know if this even counts actually was the jenkins file runner operator this is something i uh, prototyped in uh, i think it was yeah, in december or november so this one would be basically like running uh, jenkins files in a serverless fashion uh, and this is based based on what oleg built and thanks to him for like building that awesome file runner which basically turns uh, jenkins files into like serverless executions so uh, i was so these were the three ideas i was hoping if uh, we could discuss these and maybe choose or uh, take them so what are your thoughts about uh, this free res could be potentially feasible uh, you just need to factor them uh, to something which can be implemented during the jsop time frame so for example cloud events most likely yes because it's a new code cloud events uh, have uh, relatively simple api so i think that a prototype could be created uh, for uh, tecton client and uh, jenkins file runner operator uh, yeah the main problem is to actually define the scope so what would uh, a student do there hmm. so currently uh the so mm -hmm. for the tecton client plugin current uh, i was there are a few things uh, that that could be added uh, after addition of like you know uh, first uh, they could add the remaining uh, apis that aren't there uh, in the plugin then they could uh, uh, work on some features which make the uh, a uh, plugin more dynamic in nature such as uh, preloading some stuff and everything uh so this is this is what i was thinking with in terms of tecton client plugin and uh about the uh, jenkins file runner operator i was thinking if uh, it would be possible to have a ui in it so uh, maybe in the operator it runs a like the operator will have like the instance of an operator will have an instance of a ui also running alongside with where the user can see like which all file runs have been run and maybe execute file runs so this is this is the scope i was thinking about yes in principle it's possible again yeah there are examples of such implementation for example in jenkins x so hmm. i think that if you want to, to propose this project idea you yeah, just do that okay okay so should i create a, so what i'll do then for the proposal i'll create a draft and then i'll share it with you guys soon mm -hmm. yeah the mailing list is a is a very good place to share your draft proposals and you shouldn't hesitate to make a number of proposals especially since these all sound interesting um that doesn't mean you're committing to mentoring on three gsoc projects or anything it's just this is for discussion and to see what students are interested in working on and we'll see what what um i guess get traction and and um how the process goes but they all sound like very good proposals so thank you for that okay that sounds good mm -hmm. uh, actually like it's more about like the idea that that was there and you know it should be implemented it's not really about the mentoring part even if the idea just gets executed it's it's just really nice to see that so uh, just like kind of looking forward to that thanks kara thank you so yeah cloud events uh, might be interesting because it's a standalone project so the student can create it from scratch um but yeah other projects so they also viable okay so uh I'll, so what i'll do first is i'll create the first one on cloud events and then uh, maybe we can start from there the rest we can look at uh, like i'll create them also but i'm hoping the cloud events one uh, like i'll i'll get to help a little on it because i'm i'm a bit interested in uh having jenkins be discoverable by cloud events and 
you know triggering jobs by cloud events itself because then mm-hmm. if cloud events works for jenkins uh, someone from tecton or so, uh, something they could you know trigger a uh, Jen- jenkins job purely through cloud events that would be cool to see mm-hmm. okay so i don't have anything else apart from this to discuss okay then yeah probably i think everyone who participated today and see yes, you next week recording will be available and the notes are already there thanks very much everybody thank you thank, thank you everyone.